My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for October 19th is Matthew 15 and Mark chapter 7. The Pharisees during Jesus' day placed more emphasis on religious tradition than they did on truth. They were constantly looking for reasons to accuse Jesus because they felt threatened by him, and they didn't want to give up their traditions. They questioned him about why his disciples didn't follow the rules they had requiring ceremonial hand washing prior to eating. Jesus rightly points out their hypocrisy and quotes from Isaiah, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching as doctrines human commands. Human nature wants to make universal rules so we don't have to think critically and we can enforce uniformity. It's really laziness and arrogance. God wants us to be like him and that requires thinking. It requires a continual denial of our own flesh and a humility to admit that we need to be changed into his image. This happens as we continually place our carnal thought processes on the altar and ask him to give us wisdom to see as he sees. The Pharisees didn't want to exert the mental energy to go through this process because doing so would relinquish control from self to God. The desire to maintain control is, in essence, self-worship, and it is idolatry. Jesus told them, you abandon the command of God, but hold on to human tradition. They were hypocrites because they didn't do what they themselves taught, and they were more concerned with keeping their traditions than they were the actual commands of God. A lot of Christians today act the same way. We have all been influenced by the doctrines of man, and many of us don't even realize it. This is why studying the Bible is so fundamental to the walk of the believer. Many of us have grown up under pharisaical philosophies and practices, but until we study the Word of God for ourselves, we won't even know it. Why do we go to churches on Sunday mornings? Is that in the Bible? When we do get to church, why does such a large percentage of the people sit in an audience and not participate? Is that in the Bible? Why do we believe Jesus will return and spare us from tribulation? Is that really in the Bible? Why do so many people believe Satan is a fallen angel? Why do so many people say their loved ones become angels when they die? None of these things are taught in Scripture. So many of the things we don't even think about are doctrines of men and are opposed to what the Scriptures actually say. Before we read these stories and judge the Pharisees in our hearts, let's make sure we're not acting the same way they did. The reason there are 40,000 different denominations within Protestant Christianity alone is that we all think we're right and others are wrong, or we have our own preferences that are not in line with God's preferences. The Jewish people were supposed to be priests who represented Yahweh to the world around them. Jesus had come to the Jews. When the Canaanite woman came asking Jesus to deliver her daughter from the demon that plagued her, he at first ignored her. But because of her persistence, he finally replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she responds, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Woman, great is your faith, Jesus said. Let it be done for you as you want. Because of this reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. How many of our children who have illnesses are actually afflicted by a demonic entity? It's an uncomfortable question, but one we should think about. What if we prayed for their healing and we were open to God saying, cast that demon out? You know, a lot of the times we don't hear God's voice. It's because he's telling us something we just can't or won't choose to believe. Deliverance is not widely practiced by believers today because Satan has blinded our eyes to the epidemic of demonization that is taking place all around us. However, we should be praying for opportunities to learn how to walk in the authority that has been entrusted to us through the cross. Let's pray for God to give us eyes to see what's truly going on. We don't know the symptoms this girl was exhibiting, but we do know her problem was a demonic spirit that was afflicting her. Jesus healed her without saying anything to her or to the spirit or even to her mom. 
He didn't initially give this woman what she wanted because doing so was outside of the scope of his mission. She had great faith and humility, and she wasn't offended when she didn't get the answer she wanted because she was more concerned with the well-being of her child than with her own reputation. God tests us in this way. How often are we offended when we don't get the answer we want? God will give us all kinds of opportunities to be offended, and if we choose that path, we miss out on deeper fellowship with Him and the blessing that we ultimately seek. He is God. He can do and say whatever He chooses. To go deeper in our relationship with Him and to have a greater impact on those around us, we have to continually humble ourselves. He doesn't delight in putting us down or offending us, but he does delight in our character development. I also think about this woman and how much boldness she had to demonstrate in order to see her daughter healed. I wonder if her daughter grew up hearing stories about her mom's great faith. After this, he heals a man who is deaf and unable to speak by putting his fingers in the man's ears, spitting, touching the man's tongue, and then looking up to heaven, sighing deeply and saying, Be opened. These stories are totally different, and they show us there's not a specific formula for healing. Jesus was led by the Spirit, and he performed some prophetic acts sometimes and spoke words other times. If God is calling you into a healing ministry, sometimes he'll lead you to lay hands on someone. Sometimes he will lead you to command specific results, such as be opened or be made well. Once again, religious wants to give us a recipe, but the Holy Spirit wants to teach us to access the power of God through relationship and continual learning. It's a journey following God. We never arrive in this life. We're always being called deeper in order to get closer and being drawn higher. I'm thankful to be on this journey with you, though, and I pray God will bless you. May he fill you with the Spirit and give you divine insight as you read his word. May you continue growing in holiness and faith, and may the God of glory grant you the understanding to walk out the ministry he has prepared in advance for you to do. See you tomorrow.